Welcome, Countess Periel. You may enter. My thanks. What's on the table for this big shindig? A letter has arrived from Dukes Aldrich, in which he proposes a new relationship between you, Chris, and Galdia. Which I take to mean leaving the League of Nations and joining the Empire's side. Betray the League? What kind of scoundrel would agree to that? Listen to you! You've the fire of a resistance leader already! And you'll soon see for yourself what manner of scoundrel would scheme such a thing. Pray excuse our tardiness. Ah, uh, there you are, Periel. We're just, uh, well, it's good of you to come. Right this way, if you would. Of course, Mere Majesty. Ah, Countess Groom. You must be quite the important woman indeed to keep His Majesty waiting. No, no, it's all right. I promised her I'd wait, and, uh... Nevertheless, permit me to remind you of your position. You have been invited here to observe, and only to observe. And who, pray tell, are these people? My humblest apologies, Lord Harlan. If I may, Your Majesty, I would like to present Commander Noah, the young founder of the Resistance Army. Or, nay, founder of the Alliance, a group which seeks to defend the League of Nations from Imperial invasion. Resistance Army, is it? Um, well, I, I don't... And let me present myself! I'm Leon, and I'm basically his second-in-command. An alliance? Well, that sounds most prompt. Ahem! Let us move on to the matter at hand, Your Majesty. Dukes Aldrich of the Galdian Empire seeks an alliance with us. And we must decide if we will accept his terms or no. I believe the Dukes to be a rising star within the Empire, and think there is much we could learn from his bold leadership. I see this offer as a major opportunity for you, Chris. Especially compared to some upjumped mercenary and whomever else comprises his alliance. Are you mad? This is the same brazen tyrant who invaded Groom! His true intentions could not be more obvious! Countess Groom! May I remind you that you are an observer here and nothing more! I expect you to restrain yourself in the presence of His Majesty. Ugh. Sorry, Periel. Um... But, Lord Harlan, I think, uh, well, maybe there might be some merit to what Countess Groom has to say. Ah, but this is distressing indeed, Your Majesty. You know I have worked tirelessly for you, Chris, ever since your father sat the throne. Yes. I have long been one of House Sharith's most faithful servants, and yet now you claim to have no faith in my perspective? Never mind that House Fallmire nearly beggared itself to support this country in its year of famine. Take heart, Lord Harlan. King Yuma knows well both our family's loyalty to the realm. 
I'm sure he did not mean to dismiss your many great deeds. No! Of course not. We should act in due haste to inform Dukes Aldrich that we agree to his terms. Hold on! Now hold on! You're just gonna surrender to him without a fight? <laughs> ah, such ignorance speaks volumes about you, boy! No one is saying anything of the sort! Dukes Aldric has kindly extended to us the hand of friendship and unity. If you would speak of war, then tell me what guarantee we have that Eucris's army would prevail. We cannot permit our great nation to fall while under your majesty's watch. Y yes but... Cassius? You need only to give the order, your majesty. And I shall battle the Empire with everything I can muster. And what then, General Cassius? Can you promise us victory? Can you guarantee his majesty that we will emerge triumphant? <sighs> the Galdian Empire is more than just Dukes Aldric. They have the renowned General Goldwyn as well. I would be a poor military man indeed to assure ultimate victory. There, do you see? No assurances. And if General Goldwyn were faced with our General Cassius, would he promise the Empire victory? What? It's a fair question, don't you think? Even the best generals know there are no guarantees on the battlefield. And in fact, they likely know this fact best of all. Of course, all I know of the matter is what I've read in books. General Cassius, however, speaks from decades of experience. But perhaps, Lord Harlan, you have another opinion? Do you believe our esteemed General Cassius is guaranteed to lose? Uh, well, I... Well, Harlan? No! No, of course I don't believe that. But this argument is mere sophistry. It has nothing to do with the topic at hand. Melridge, you were summoned here to draft our reply once this matter was settled, not to sow doubt in his majesty with rhetorical nonsense. Quite right, quite right. I do apologize for any confusion I may have caused. That said, there is still time before Dukes Eldrick will expect our reply, and His Majesty seems exhausted. Shall we table the matter for today? But... Your Majesty! Oh, um... Yes, I think so. Let's give it a little more time before we decide. See now what I've been dealing with? It's been an entire week of that. Ah, uh, but aren't you and the king supposed to be friends? Groom and you, Chris, have enjoyed favorable relations for generations. And I visited many times as a child. We are acquaintances of old, but I would not go so far as to say friends. You, Chris. You see, is one of the three great powers of the League, along with Norstar and the Dragon Newt Nation of Kinon. My little groom is of minor significance in comparison. Nevertheless, I am told that at the untimely death of Yuma's father, the Queen hid herself away in grief, and now Yuma has come to ascend the throne. He and I come from very similar circumstances. Yet, you have such different personalities. Hmm? Uh, yes, well, even as a child, Yuma was never very decisive. You think maybe he's afraid to defy that Harlan guy? 
To be fair, the previous king was quite beholden to Harlan. That is why the man was first given his station. A station he has leveraged for all it's worth. <sighs> anyway, we should not tarry here long before returning to the inn. I have no desire to run into Harlan again. Wanna poke around a little until it's time to go? Hey, uh, you're the fellow from the Alliance, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I wasn't eavesdropping on the conference. I just, uh, ha happened to catch that one little part. Who are you? Oh, oops. <laughs> Silly me. Um, I'm Yulin, King Yuma's handmaid. So, um, please don't think ill of His Majesty. I know people call him indecisive, but they've got him all wrong. He's a very kind ruler, you see, and he worries about making decisions that lead to people getting hurt. been. We should return to the inn at once so I can continue brooding about a solution to this problem. Do you think there even is a solution? Well, I guess we could... Wait, no, sorry, I got nothing. Countess Periel, His Majesty Yuma is here to speak with you. May I open the door? Of course. Please, enter. Hello, Periel. I had a little extra time and was hoping I could see you. 
I'm most pleased you've come to visit. I only wish it could have been for one of our usual goodwill summits, instead of this most unfortunate situation. Oh, um, yes, of course. I'm terribly sorry about your country. Your name is Noah, yes? Did you rise up to fight for Pariel's sake? Yep, it was all for her. Oh, it... it was? What? It so was not! What a big fat liar! <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, well, don't! <laughs> I see, I see. Kidding, is it? Hmm, such a pity. Huh? But never mind that, Yuma. Let me ask you something. Not as the Countess of Groom, but as someone you've known since we were both small. What do you intend to do? Will you fight? Or will you place your trust in Dukes Aldrich? Well, I, uh, I just... The truth is, um, I don't know what the right choice is. If you stay the course your advisors are laying for you, you Chris will be at the Empire's mercy. No, worse, at the Duke's. But if we fight and lose, my people will fare far worse. Perhaps, um, the Duke's made a mistake in attacking your country. If so, you could maybe still talk it out? <sighs> uh, your Majesty, you're gonna be late for your next... Oh, <laughs> is it that time already? I'm sorry, Periel. We'll continue this later. Countess Grum, Commander Noah, I bid you both good day. Ugh, same old Yuma. He never changes. We need to find some way to help make up his mind. Come on, people. Ideas. Uh, sorry, but I'm not much of an ideas man. Hmm... Nope, still nothing. But let's think while we walk. Maybe some exercise will knock a good idea loose. Not the worst plan I've ever heard. No good, huh? Yep. Uh. <laughs> Nothing to it. Got away. Yep. Yeah. 
Come on. Come on. Yes. Yep. Uh, perfect catch. Hup. Come on, come on. <laughs> Nothing to it. Yep. Come on, come on. Yes. Yep. Come on, come on. Yes! Yep! Uh. <laughs> Nothing to it! Catch me a wheel I bring. Oh, I must find that. This is where that Melridge guy lives, right? Guests, is it? How unusual. I remember you from the conference earlier. Please, come in, come in. I see, I see. You seek some method of swaying His Majesty. But why would you bring this matter to me? Because you were the one who stood up to Harlan at the conference. Uh, yep, you were all like, but riddle me this, jerk, and then everyone got distracted and nothing was settled. <laughs> yes, I suppose I did do something along those lines. I admit to being less than thrilled with the prospect of giving Lord Harlan free reign to transform our relationship with the Empire. Agreed. We cannot permit Dukes Aldrich to have his way on this. Lord Harlan has been advocating for cuts to the studium. Should he gain too much power, I might find it hard to continue living in the comfort to which I've become accustomed. So you're just in it for yourself? Correct. Not that merely whittling away Lord Harlan's power will change much in the long run. Your name is Noah, yes? Well, there may be a way to change things if a person was so inclined. Countess, did you know Lord Harlan purchased an old manor on the outskirts of town last year from another member of the Chamber of Lords? 
He's apparently so fond of it that he made it his primary residence. Well, bully for him. What of it? I hear the manor has recently seen quite the stream of unfamiliar faces hailing from foreign lands. I wonder if some might be messengers from the Empire. At the same time, security around the manor has been tightened to the extent that actual Eucrisians are rarely allowed inside. So, uh, this matters why? He's implying that Lord Harlan bought a manor on the outskirts of town in order to meet secretly with foreign agents. Goodness me, that is suspicious. And one more thing. On the southeast side of Haishan, you'll find an old part of the city known as Lost Town, which was flooded out long ago. While Harlan's house of mystery may be under tight guard, one could easily slip in by way of Lost Town, were they so inclined. How do you know all that? Oh, I've been poking around for holes in the man's armor for some time now. This guy is incorrigible. So you're suggesting we sneak into Harlan's manor and search for evidence linking him to the Empire? I'm suggesting that if one were to find such evidence, it could be a breakthrough in terms of the pending alliance negotiations. While I am not fond of proposing tenuous plans, sometimes needs must. Tenuous certainly beats sitting on a sofa and doing nothing. Be aware that Lost Town is said to be infested with monsters. Anyone heading there should take all necessary precautions. We'll be careful. Thanks. He said Lost Town is on the southeast side of the city, yes? Uh, yup. Now let's go dig up some dirt on Harlan. Yeah. Let's see how noble he feels when we're done with him. I think you might be losing sight of our objective here. Do this.
what you get! No surprises here! Let's do this! Yes! for you, hmm? No surprises here!
Need something? What's that, fella? You want me to join you? Hakugin, is that really you? Mio? The hell are you doing here? I thought you joined up with some militia. I did. Then things happened. Yeah? Well, ever since you farted out on your little warrior's journey, I've been bored out of my skull. I scoured the land for a worthy opponent and came up shorter than a gnome doing the limbo. It's you or no one, babe. Then I vote no one. There aren't enough lives in the world to save me when it comes to the way you spar. Come on now. That's no way to talk about the best friend slash rival who came all this way to find you. Best friends don't try to chop each other's heads off. Says you. <laughs> anyway, word on the road is that you're at war with some empire or another. So let me float an idea by you. I'll help you out until your little conflict is resolved. But once it's done, you have to go one round with me. One round where I'm likely killed at the end. Which is what makes it fun! Yay! Also, don't try and pretend you're not into it. I see your eye. It's gleaming all over the place. I suppose I have learned my share of lessons at the edge of mortality. The place where life and death lie separated by the thinnest of gossamer strands. That's a lot of words to say yes, babe. It's your decision, Noah. Join us. Good choice, fella. You won't regret it. I'll meet you back at your HQ. And, yes, I already know where it is. Scouting out hidden places is sort of a specialty of mine. Hell, I probably would have raided the place if I didn't run into you just now. Beast. <laughs> Yes? Do you want something? Yes? Do you want something?
Whoa, wow. The rune lenses really do have a radiance all their own. Bet I could make this little butte shine even more, but I'd have to get my hands on a rune of... Hmm? What do you want? I'm busy, so could you come back later? Unless you happen to be carrying a rune of currents, in which case, step right up and let's talk. To complete this research I'm working on, I have got to get my mitts on a rune of currents. That's all there is to it. To complete this re... To complete this research I'm working on, I have got to get my mitts on a rune of currents. That's all there is to it. <laughs> 